Hello guys and welcome back to another Boom Beach video. I am so hyped for today's video. It is a Friday uh, for pretty much everyone. School is out and it's it's almost summertime. We've never Boom Beach video. We got a trader coming in. Um, so the problem here guys is I already recorded a video but I forgot to start the stupid game recorder. So I just recorded the audio in my voice. But anyway, I was saying on that video that you always I, I would say you always want to buy uh, or trade in three life for three dark. It's always a good deal, so just do it. And some people like life, so they're like, okay, Christian, it's a waste. But I'm not going to talk about that today. You guys know how much I hate life. Anyway, we do know now that the trader deals reset. I believe it's every eight weeks. I could be wrong, but you know what? I, I probably am wrong. Maybe it's every six or something, but it's a cycle. So every, uh, unless you move up, like uh, a level uh there's like different tiers of trades you can get and unless you move up a tier so this account I, I don't even know what to tier it's like over level 50 or something i'll get the max tier i have no clue but until i get over that level i'm gonna still get the same trades um in a cycle anyway personally i think that the trades should be random and i also personally think that the trader chess should be random i don't believe the trader uh the trader crates sorry not trader chess i don't believe the trader crates are random i believe they're on a cycle or some sort of cycle some sort of because there's some people that get the same stuff every single time so personally i think it's on a cycle <laughs> Um, and I kind of wish it was random because it would make those uh, super awesome crate openings, uh, the trader crate spams. It would make them a lot more fun, honestly, guys, if they were random. Kind of like Clash Royale, I, I guess. Anyway, so I'm showing you Operation Attacks today on the mini task force. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on Universal Remote because there were some people that didn't quite use it right. And I don't want you to take it the wrong way. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Help, help, help you out a little bit. Anyway, so I've attacked Tarzer. I believe that's how you say it. Tarzer about 10 times in the course of my Boom Beach career or, or, or whatever. And every single time, I would say, maybe excluding one time, I have missed the stupid shock on these shock launchers every time it gets so annoying i don't know why i keep missing it it's not even that hard of a shock i don't know like what happens um but honestly guys it, it's it's it kind of bugs me out a little bit enough about that anyway we got black coming in here black exalibur xavier i have no clue anyway he's uh, attacking distortion and i believe he was able to take it out uh, it's a pretty nice, it's a pretty easy base, I would say. Um, for the most part, guys, actually, it's not. It's a four-shot hit, so we probably, no, it's a one, two, three. Yeah, it's a three-shot hit, not a four-shot hit. I believe that's a three-shot hit. Um, but he had enough for critters at the end, so that tells you how much energy he had. Anyway, we got High Bird, and I believe this is the first attack. I'm going to start uh, giving you guys some Universal Remote tips. Now, I also want to say that by no means I am a good Universal Remote player. Um, I have a little experience, and I have used it in op I've used it in operations. I've used it uh, for player bases. I've used it for gear hearts. I've used it for a couple bases, but I just want to tell you guys that if, if there's a person like Carnage or someone else making a video about this. They are way more, um, um, they know a lot more about this than I do. So the first thing I would say you guys should do is just calculate the damage is going to be dealt uh, from the buildings around it because Universal Remote is only good if you can take down the defense or wound it. That one was okay, he wounded it. Um, but you also have to know her range because he, uh, you, d you don't need to flare right up next to it to take it down. If you flare to the defense, uh, you could, uh, if you activate your ability, then flare to that defense, uh, she will target the defense and she'll stand way back here. Now, the only time you want to flare next to the defense is let's say he wanted to take down this shock launcher also. Since there's buildings in here, you can't really do anything. So what I would do is I would probably uh, drop or mark or flag both of these buildings so you don't have to waste any flares. 
uh, just flare up here between these two cells up a little bit like where that uh, status bar is and then just activate her ability and then activate it again and she'll target both of those defenses if they're both in range that's the first couple tips i would say uh, you don't need to flare up next to it and you'll see a little more about that later um and yeah that's i'm just giving you a couple tips in between uh some awesome operation hits so we got high bird coming in here uh attempting to take down the other rocket launcher wasn't quite able to do it um just not enough energy but it's okay man uh, we all have we all have uh failed attacks i don't even know if that was a full attack i would say it's pretty good for his level um anyway we got adele coming in here now this guy is also using universal remote now another Another tip you guys, I'm going to give you guys, we'll put it on times one. Another tip you guys can have um, is if you are flaring to a defense, make sure you activate your ability before you drop your flare. That's the biggest thing. Um, and this attack was, I, I don't know what he was doing with his universe remote. He was probably one of the first time, uh, probably the first time using universe remote because I don't even believe he activated the ability. I believe he thought if he just flared to it, he'll be fine. Um, he also used an extra smoke that he didn't need. But it's okay, man. We're all learning in the mini task force. So, yeah, she doesn't drop anything. He got the smoke down on time before she died. And he's going to try again. He doesn't activate the ability. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of makes me cringe. But it's okay. We're all learning, man. So he flares to it and just never act. Oh, that time he does activate it. But... Uh, you have to make sure you use your ability and then flare. You can't drop the flare, then use the ability. It's not going to work that way. Um, he drops his hookah, and he was actually able to clear a decent amount of this base, uh, of this left-hand side. Well, not decent. I mean, he cleared a little bit, but not too much. Um, and yeah, so another way you guys, or another tip you guys can have is marking your defense. If you mark, mark the defense... It might actually help you even more. Um, I would say if you're taking down one defense, uh, you don't need to mark it. But if you take or, or if you're using an AZ attack afterward, I would say mark it. I got him. I got it mixed up. I would say don't mark it if uh, if you only have to take down one defense. Mark it if you have to take down multiple defenses next to each other, or if you have to use an AZ attack or a smoky hookah attack, uh, and you need to save uh, the energy cost for a flare. So you don't want that energy cost to be driven up because you used a couple more flares when you're doing this. So he didn't use universal remote. Volley didn't use universal remote on this attack. And this attack was awesome. He cleared, it looks like, all of those rocket launchers and a lot more of these defenses down here. So that was a beautiful attack, guys. Was able to clear a very nice portion of this hit. So good job. We got strange attractors coming in, uh, and Am Am Amaral Amaral Vali coming. Is that the same guy? Vali Vali Vali. Um, okay, so this guy knows his smokes. Look at this. <laughs> he knows his smokes, guys. Um, he knows how to smoke ever spark. So he's probably a, a pro at this, or he's he's good at this. Uh, he is not gapping out of smokes too much. You have to be aware of the grapplers. But he gets up here, and he's safe. Uh, he didn't need that extra smoke, but you know what? It happens to even me at times. It's not a big deal. Um, so in this case, he's going to be taking down these three defenses. Now, he does he does accomplish it, but I would say if there's three defenses or two defenses and more, you, you should probably mark it. And you have to watch out because um, uh, buildings like the, uh, the rocket launchers next to it, or I believe the shock launcher fired and hit this sniper tower so now this sniper tower is marked so he has to drop a flare um so just it, it targeting works at your troop will target whichever defense is closest or in her range whichever defense is in her range and hurt the most so in this case if he doesn't use the flare she'll show a target the sniper tower and drop the universe remote on the sniper tower but he does have a flare down so he was able to take it down you see how he does that he drops the ability and then he drops the flare that's what you have to do never never drop the uh drop the flare then drop the ability uh people figured that out like the first day of it being out so many fails the first day but it's okay um not even in our task force like everyone's everyone's uh 
<laughs> it, it's funny because people didn't even like figure out how to do this so like four days into the the release of heroes and then people are like oh man you know our story mode is amazing um, another thing you have to worry about. Okay, Fluffy doesn't use universal remote. Another thing you have to worry about is the super high up operations. Um, and I'm talking in terms of operations because honestly, at lower levels, it doesn't matter too much. Um, like in this case, um, I mean, I, like you don't use universal remote on like a base unless you're using it to distract defenses. Like for the most part, you're going to use it in operations in Gearheart. That's that's pretty much where you'll see it. And I just said pretty much over and over and over again. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, if, if you're doing a super high up operation, I'm talking about like Forlorn Hope, Deep Cut, Massive Attack, uh, not, not really Dead End, uh, but those super high up operations, that's when it becomes important. That's when it becomes so important to look at the defenses around it and make sure those defenses can take down that other defense. Like, if, if this rocket launcher here has 200,000 HP, like you'll see in Forlorn Hope, these defenses cannot take it out in time. And I made this this mistake on a Chimera hit. There was a hot pot next to a rocket launcher, and I thought that, oh, if I just take down the, if I just remote, um, the, the rocket launcher, the hot pot would just fry it. The problem is that rocket launcher had like 150,000 HP. So I barely did anything. It was, it was so bad. Um, the hot pot doesn't do as much as you think. So, okay. This is kind of another issue. Where, why are we going left on sliding block? There's literally a park pretty much open. Like one more attack could open up a park and we'll be fine. I don't know why we're going left. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna share the rest of this attack. I saw this in the first part of the video. I mean, the last video that I never recorded. Last video that failed recording. For battles like this, where two defenses that you wanna take out with universal remote, doesn't have a lot of buildings around it, defenses around it to take down that building that you remote, uh, don't activate it twice. And he made that problem, uh, but it's okay. So we got Fluffy 2.0 coming in here. This is Fluffy's second account. Takes on that rocket launcher that's wounded. Nice uh, universal remote up there. Um, there was only like two buildings that were covering and a couple grapplers that was covering that rocket launcher. And it actually dealt a pretty decent amount of damage. Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I think that's pretty much all the tips I need to give you guys. There's obviously a lot more um, if you're doing higher up operations, but I would say if, if you could take two things away from this video, two tips um, that I give you for this video. Um, okay, finally, we're going right. <laughs> I don't know why we were going left. If, if I can give you two tips. One, know where the range of uh, your Everspark is. For every single level, it's going to be the same. I don't know what it is. Is it nine? Is it for nine or six or eight? It's between. I uh, know it's it's more than six. Um, it's. I want to say it's like nine, uh, nine tiles. But whatever it is, make sure you memorize that and know where it lands. So so if I want to, uh, because it will save you smokes and it, that saves you like energy, a lot of energy if you're flying across the map. So let's say I want to universal remote this mortar it says she has a range of long uh we'll get back to the battle but it says she has a range of long which i believe is nine if i want to universal remote this mortar i'll go let's say nine tiles i i don't know what it is but i'll go nine tiles back and that's where my last smoke will be the edge of that smoke will be on that ninth tile so ever spark will sit on the edge so literally all i need is like two smokes if i want to keep her covered from these mortars here so it can save you a lot of energy if you do it this way so uh, honestly just know the range of Everspark know where she stops walking so you don't waste like a, an extra smoke or two extra smokes um, another thing is work on your beach landing you only need like one smoke on your beach and don't like don't cover it up too much you, you've seen that a little earlier today so um, I believe this is the next one we are at. This guy uses, uh, it, it looks like, Universal Remote. Or no, just, I don't know what he's doing. What is he doing? 
is he taking down these rocket launchers? You know, I studied this base um, for a while. And I decided I wouldn't go that way because it's more shocks. I mean, this way was only... If, if you park right here, it was only like a one, two... It was only a three shock hit, which was which was barely anything. So I don't know why we were going that way. Uh, this guy finishes it off. This guy is a level... What was it? 65? One of our higher level members. <laughs> getting it done, guys. Getting it done. He is using brick as well. So another tip I would say is uh, don't activate the ability if, if the defense is sitting in the open. I think people see... Uh, the ability being used in super high level operation bases and they say, oh my gosh, it's so cool. It takes down the defense. And then they go and try it on defenses like this. Um, not this battle, but battles before. So they go and try it on defenses like this in the middle of nowhere where no building can't even reach it. Um, so that's pretty much the main thing. Why are we going that way? We only need like one more hookah hit over here. Then we can just hit core. I know that these guys are low. Okay, we're not watching critters. I know that these guys are lower levels, but I'm pretty sure they can do like, what was it? It's probably only like a 4 million shield burn. It's not that big of a deal. But anyway, yeah, we spent way too many attacks clearing, clearing that left-hand side. So we got Ethan coming in here, uh, not using universal remote this is one of those bases that i don't really know the path to either if, i mean i used to tell people to bring in smoky hookah hit from this side uh and you'd only need like one shock with a uh, smoky hookah but he was able to almost take it out i know i just pretty much skipped in that entire attack but we don't okay we're not watching tanks guys i'm sorry if you bring tanks into an operation you you don't you don't deserve a spot on my video. Uh, I, you guys know how much I hate tanks. I hate tanks so much, guys. I don't know why. They're just so annoying. Um, so he uses universary mode, and this is... I mean, he's using it as... Uh, I, I was giving you tips on how to take down a defense with universary mode. He was using it um, trying to block defenses which is a whole nother video i'm not even going to talk about it because honestly i don't know too much about that subject um but a burn just a burn shield that's what you want to do for that base clear the rocket launchers clear one side at a lower level that's what you want to do then just burn the course so uh this one is also going what is he doing okay so i know that there's uh grapplers here and he actually does a good Good job. He doesn't really need to shock the grapplers, but he clears the grapplers. It's okay. Uh, he. Okay, never mind. He couldn't have just burned it. Those grapplers would have torn him apart. So, good move on him. We're not watching burn shields. Uh, a couple more attacks, and I believe we're out of. Uh... Okay. Um, I be oh, oh, he's just doing a shield burn. I'm, I was a little confused by why he brought heavies, but you know what? It's okay, guys. It is okay. Uh, just just another shield burn so we're not showing you shield burns that one is going to be a shield burn uh and rogue we're, we'll end it with a little rogue finishing the black river base so overall guys i hope i helped you out a little bit for some uh universal remote and operation tips uh, if you did like it be sure to drop a like as always we're not done with the video yet. I don't know why I started the outro sequence. But there we go, guys. That is going to be it for the video. I hope you, I helped you with a universal remote. If I did, be sure to drop a like. As always, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. We upload every single morning. So make sure you are subscribed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.